In this video, I'm going to explain the origin of piezoelectricity. And it's super important to understand the origin, not just the phenomenon that pressure uh, creates charge or applied electric field or voltage is going to create some type of displacement. Not only to know that fact, uh, which is perhaps uh, you know an elementary stage, but understanding the origin of piezoelectricity is going to allow you to appreciate what actually happens when you have a real piezoelectric material, you put in an application, and it starts behaving differently under different environmental circumstances than you would have originally anticipated. So here I'm going to break down the two origins of piezoelectricity. The first origin, the first fundamental building block of how piezoelectric, piezoelectricity occurs is because of the unit cell of the crystal, of the piezoelectric material. So piezoelectric materials must and have to be what's called non-central symmetric. Basically, there's some anti-symmetry in the crystal structure by which there are the bonds between the positive and the negative ions in the material are not in the same strength. They don't have the same symmetry. What does that mean? That means when you apply a force on the piezo material, there's going to be a net displacement, a, 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 a change in the relative positions of the positive and the negative ions. So you press on the material, the positive and negative ions are shifting in their relative positions, not equally. So the point is not equal shifts because there will always be shifts whenever you apply force to a material. There will always be shifts in the ions. That's how materials shrink and expand by because the bonds get larger and smaller. But not only are the bonds getting larger and smaller in piezo materials, the distances between the positive and negative ions, those ratios are not remaining the same. Thus, on the external sides of a piezo material, charges will appear in order to balance out that shift in internal shifts in ion, um, ion positions. So we can understand this quite simply with a The second contribution to piezoelectricity is what is called domain wall motion. So what are domains? So we know we have grains in a crystal or, or ceramic material that, is, that they're grain boundaries and that grain is a amorphous sort of boundary around a single crystal which exists in a larger structure of, um, of, of, of the material. So there's, not lo there's order inside of that grain, it's in fact sort of a single crystal's long range order it's not amorphous that um, the bonds are very irregular and this and the in this the structure of the crystal or the structure of the material is irregular but in this case there is the grain which represents a unit a single long range order uh, of unit cells and around that boundary is the grain boundary and Within the grain boundary, within, within the single crystal or, or that one grain that exists, there is a unique, um, there is a unique physical distinction, another type of separation that isn't a grain, that isn't a single, that isn't a crystal, but it's a, it's a subunit, which is called a domain. And what domains are, are alignment of crystals within a single crystal. So let me explain. So if we have a PZT material. Let's say we have a um, uh, an ion or, or, or crystal structure that, such that we have a tetragonal or we have a, like a box shaped crystal sh crystal unit. And within and let's say on each of one of those edges there is an oxygen negatively charged ion. And within the middle there is a titanium uh, ion. And because it's well, it's because this um, you know this crystal structure, which isn't complete by the way, but I'm simplifying it. Uh, it is not symmetric. That titanium ion won't lie right in the center of that oxygen box. It will either lie toward one of the faces, thus creating that uh, uh, anti-symmetry, thus creating that non-central symmetric uh, behavior that leads to piezoelectricity. So there is this orientation which exists in these, in these cages, in these unit cell cages. So if we have, for example, uh, let's say my fingers, uh, the titanium ion is placed more toward my fingers and we have such a box where we have oxygen ions at the at each of these edges and we have another one. So we have kind of uh, alignment in the direction. So we have a titanium ion displaced this way toward this edge 
in, in this unit cell, and in this one we have it displaced toward this edge, and this is what we typically think as a crystal. And this was actually my understanding of what a crystal was, and there was a lot of confusion in my head between domains and crystals. So, but let's keep going. So we have this two kind of crystals back to back, two unit cells back to back. We have the titanium ion displaced toward one edge, so it's piezoelectric because there's because a non central symmetric uh, structure, and we have you know one unit cell at the back of the other. Uh, but within a single crystal, we can also have this case where we have a displacement of a titanium toward my fingers here, and at the edge we have another crystal going in this direction, where we have a dis displacement of that titanium ion or whatever uh, uh, ion displacement we were referring to, uh, to define the orientation, it is actually placed in the other, in an opposite direction, in a 90 degree direction, or could it be 180, but we're we'll into that right now. So it can be placed at a separate direction, but these will still be considered to be a single crystal, despite them having opposite orientations. Um, they are still considered to be continuous, still considered to be long range order. Now it's not this drastic, like I'm showing, uh, this huge difference in length, they're actually quite smaller. So the transition is more smooth. It's not amorphous. It's not a grain boundary. Uh, the transition is more smooth, but there is a, there is a energy sort of associated with this boundary. This is called the domain wall where one orientation of unit cells meets another orientation. This occurs in ferroelectric materials, PZT, which is one of the reasons why it's used, because this part, this feature of a domain wall uh, adds a significant contribution toward the piezoelectricity. So what basically happens when you apply an electric field, like let's say you had this. When you, when you, when you apply an electric field, obviously the material is going to expand, you apply a voltage. But the other thing that happens is this boundary switches. So this domain orients itself and comes out as well. And when this sort of flips, this adds, obviously this, it's much longer. If you consider this length as where you're, where you're, where you're applying the electric field, you know, you apply your, you know, your electrodes, your voltage here, and then you have suddenly a shift that's going to create a huge expansion in the material, which adds a significant amount to, of, of electromechanical uh, coupling into the material. So the main point to understand about domains is where they significantly add to the piezo properties, but they certainly put a lot of problems in design. These domain, these interfaces, these ener high energy interfaces, they result in the a, a large amount of temperature dependence on properties. Now there's also temperature dependence from the unit cell, but there's a significant amount of temperature dependence from these boundaries. Uh, also, they are stress dependent and how, how quickly they, they change and react. They are also dependent on the applied electric field, uh, as well as they add a significant amount of variation in production, because although we do control these boundaries and how, how easily these uh, boundaries move and, and, and thereby we control loss properties and, uh, and piezoelectric coupling, uh, and piezoelectric coupling in the material, at the same time, they also con contribute toward a significant amount of variation between batches of piezo ceramics. So from this video, now you know about the origin of piezoelectricity. You know that the unit cell is fundamentally responsible for piezoelectricity, that anti-symmetry, what's officially called uh, non-central symmetric. Uh, but uh, for most commercial materials, most commercial applications which use the material PZT, which is a ferroelectric material, uh, there's many there's many materials in that class, but the most used is uh, is called PZT. That that those specific classes of materials has an additional component, additional um, component to the piezoelectricity, which makes them very attractive, makes them very high performing, uh, but it does add temperature dependence, stress dependence, electric field dependence, uh, an increased amount of variability in batches, but it's kind of a necessary thing to deal with. So if you like this video, uh, share it with whoever you know that works on ultrasonic devices, that works on piezoelectric devices. It kind of puts a little bit of a understanding as to why these properties are different, why they differ, where they, origin, where they originate from. Thanks for watching.